Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again for another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I am Nathan. And Colton, what on earth is all this stuff? I have with? holes in metal. <laughs> I have holes in what's called tile bridges. I, man, I'll, I'll need to be uh, uh, educated all right. on, on what I'm, I'm seeing here. Okay. Um, but as always, uh, feel free to get involved with us. Uh, you know, just share your, your, your ideas, you know, ideas for videos that you'd like to see. Uh, we want your involvement. Um, but let's get the show on the road to talk, what, talk about what's in front of us. A little bit of tile bridge and rough end pan talk coming your way. All right, Nathan. So, like I said, I have a bunch of holes with metal in them. And I want to know, you know, what goes into the holes and what what's its purpose. Sure, you got it. So uh, when you're doing 70 volt in ceiling speakers in commercial applications, sometimes uh, it requires some additional hardware to mount the speakers. Sometimes it's sold with the speaker, sometimes it's not. Uh, because as we all know, lots of times commercial audio takes place in places with drop tile ceilings like yeah. we have above. Right. Uh, if you ever wonder what a drop tile ceiling is, you never heard that term before, it's basically the two by two or two by four uh, T-bar grid uh, that you see like in the classrooms when we were growing yeah. up in yeah, the library. Yeah. A lot of convenience stores now have yeah. them, that kind of thing. It's that white tile with all the black and gray holes in it. Yeah. Uh, so basically that's a drop down ceiling. You know, there's an actual ceiling way above that but you drop it down and then they run air ducts and all that kind of good stuff through it. Sometimes called false ceilings. Right yeah exactly like but the problem is if you got a speaker uh, that tile is light enough that you don't want to just mount your speaker to that tile. Nope. Uh, I repeat you don't want to mount your, your speaker just <laughs> to that tile. Do not do that. Um, one thing we want to make sure and go over before we get too far in this is um, you always want to make sure and read all the mounting instructions for whatever Absolutely. speaker you're looking at. Make sure and read the manual. If you have any concerns about what you're doing, you want to make sure and consult a pro, you want to consult a carpenter, uh, and you also want to make sure and review uh, local building code in your area um, because sometimes that does pertain to, to speakers and the mounting of speakers. Very important. Uh, if you do have a connection for a safety cable on a speaker, we want to recommend that you always use that. Uh, whenever possible. So uh, basically, if you got a speaker going into a two by two grid, uh, you don't want to just mount it to the tile like we mentioned. Right. So enter some of these uh, two foot wide tile bridges. These actually lay into the T-bar uh, ceiling and then the speaker itself actually mounts to uh, the tile bridge. Gotcha. Uh, so it actually is secured and helps to distribute the weight across the overall ceiling. So yep. it's not just the tile. Um, these are important because, uh, you know, depending on the speaker, uh, many times speakers are mounted in, you know, seismic locations, California, places like that where the earth shakes and that kind of deal. You want to make sure you got something uh, beside, you know, or, or sometimes the uh, roof leaks or the right. AC yep. vent leaks or whatever, and that can cause damage to tiles, deteriorate them. Uh, and make for a big issue where you know ceiling uh, ceiling speakers are no longer yes. secured. So that is where tile bridges come into play. This one is from Atlas Sound. This is the 81-8R. Rests on the grid. Speaker mounts right to it. Uh, they also come in different shapes uh, for bigger speakers, smaller speakers. This is for a Bose DS16F. Very um, popular. And you know basically uh, the way it works is you know this lays in the grid, cut a hole in the tile, speaker goes in adjust the uh, dog legs or screw terminal, you know, screws, what, however that particular speaker mounts. Once again, reviewing the manufacturer's specifications and manual. Yep. Uh, and then that tightens onto uh, this brace here that helps to support the weight. Absolutely. Uh, there also are tile bridges for subwoofers, you know, like you see this big hole here. This is not a tile bridge, but we'll get back to that. Uh, there's, yeah, tile bridges for subwoofers and then also for even smaller speakers. This one here is for a Bose, uh, Bose satellite uh, speaker, which is, as you can see, much smaller. Uh, but while I have this in my hand here, this is not a tile bridge. Uh, as you can see, it's a different, yeah, it different. different width, yeah. first of all. So it's not two feet wide. Yes. So it's not designed to, to uh, mount across the, uh, the tile. Uh, these can be different lengths and different shapes. And it also has a whole lot more of mounting holes gotcha. uh, throughout it. So, yeah, so what's up with that? Yeah, what's, what's that for? So this is what's called a rough-in pan. 
so basically a rough in pan, rough in plate, trim ring. A lot of manufacturers have different languages for yeah. uh, how they want to convey this information. Mm -hmm. But basically, rather than doing a tile bridge, which su supports the, uh, the weight across the, uh, the ceiling because the tile can't support it, yeah. rough in pans are traditionally used in uh, hard ceiling applications. So things like sheetrock, sheet rock, wood yeah. ceilings, things like that. Uh, many times you might see a rough in pan. Rough in pans don't always come with the speakers and they don't always necessarily serve structural purposes. Uh, so sometimes the hard surface of the ceiling can hold the weight of the speaker, but we also have the scenario of needing to know where speakers are going to be mounted. Yeah. Uh, and, and that has to be communicated on the job site of where are we going to be putting speakers in this location. Uh, so, you know, audio is a part of the construction business to a degree. You know, you've got, just like you got guys building walls and building ceilings and running air ducts and all that. Exactly. Uh, everybody on the site's got to know where we're going to have speakers so that they can make sure and not build a, uh, you know, put a ceiling yeah. joist right above where you're putting a speaker and that kind of thing. And so a rough in pan serves the purpose of uh, these holes line up with your studs yeah. in your ceiling and you basically nail these or ham you know, screw or nail these in place to where you have an opening uh, to where the spe speaker can be mounted. Gotcha. It does serve to kind of reinforce, reinforce structural integrity as well. Uh, you know, in the case of a big subwoofer like this, being able to distribute the weight uh, to a rough end pan to the plate, uh, you know, can be beneficial. But the main purpose, once again, is nailing this down across your studs uh, in whichever location, whether it's, you know, I'm not a carpenter, 22 on center, yeah. or 24 <laughs> on center, you know, all those different positions. Montana, Allen. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call me Bob Vila. Yeah. Uh, but you're able to basically use this to mount um, and then basically you have, have a position in the ceiling where there's a hole. Yeah. So as a result, when your sheetrock guys come through, mm -hmm. they can uh, pop their sheet, sheet rock up there, either leave a hole for it, cut a hole for you, or let you cut the hole. Yeah. Uh, and, but they know that's a space where a speaker's gonna go. As a result, that should keep uh, you know, anybody from running a water pipe right through right. the back, to, you know, because they're gonna see this hole indicated for that's where speakers are gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should also mention some other manufacturers have different colored tile bridges um, or, you know, to where they pop out a little bit better. You can mm -hmm. see them a little better. Uh, but for the most part, every speaker has its own rough in pans or its own tile bridges, depending on what you're mounting it into. Right. Uh, sometimes those are sold with the speaker, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that you communicate with your sales rep like us. Yeah. What are you doing? Where's this going? Where are you going to put it? Right. Um, and then once again, it's important to review local code because sometimes rough in pans can be required, um, you know, to facilitate the process. Right. Also for this, some of the structural stuff that I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but it's always important to note, this is the speaker I'm going to use. This is where I'm going to put it. What hardware do I need? Exactly. Uh, and then you always want to review the manual and make sure if you're uncomfortable with anything you're doing with speakers placed overhead, you want, always want to consult a pro. Absolutely. Yeah, I think a huge underlying summary of all this is, you know, audio a lot of the time is a afterthought of a, you know, like, like a construction build or anything like that. And, you know, it's, it's very important that these things are, uh, you know, considered to make your audio system the best that it could be, you know. Um, contractors watching this or just if you're doing this out on your own just uh, you know as, as early in the process you know it, it's possible to start thinking of these things and within well, you know the tile bridges which which one should you get that type of deal like Nathan was saying um, just don't make it an afterthought like um, unfortunately a lot of projects end up being um, and yeah I think that's a huge takeaway for me as far as just the just the idea of tile bridges too. Yeah, so absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. And if you guys have questions about which tile bridges you need for your speakers, uh, or which speakers are right for your project, if you need rough in pans, if you don't need rough in pans, all that kind of good stuff, feel free to reach out to us. Let us uh, walk you through it, talk to you a little bit about it. You can always reach us on our website, www.proacousticsusa.com, uh, or you can reach us on our 800 number, 888. 256-4112. Uh, we do have some of these products available on some of our e-commerce stores and on our website if you do need tile bridges and things like that. 
uh, or otherwise get back in touch, let us help out. I can be reached at Nathan at ProAcoustics.com. And I'm Colton at ProAcoustics.com. That's Colton with an I. Yep, and uh, definitely let us know if you're watching. If there's anything else we can help out with, any questions you have, more than happy to help, whether it's commercial audio, pro audio, home audio, sound masking, anything that we can anything. help you guys with, certainly reach out, let us know you're watching. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends, like us, uh, follow us on Facebook, and subscribe. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys next time.